Well met, lords and ladies, Jacob Burrow speaking, and my goodness, I have not said that for a long time. And yes, I stuck to my word. The only video that I filmed in this September was the response to Beanie Boy's actual diss track on me, which isn't out yet, but he let me see it in advance. Now, I said that the only exception to the rule that I was not going to upload anything new in September was if My Street Season 6 came back. Lo and behold, last week, Afmau announced that My Street Season 6 was going to come back. And not only this, but it was going to come out on the 29th of September. Lo and behold as well, it is now the 29th of September and the episode is out. Too Late Part 1. I was going to watch this with musical Natasha, however, Despite that plan, Musical Natasha is not online, even though we agreed to do that. So I'm just going to review this episode on my own. But I know that this episode is going to come out in two parts because it says and that they're both going to come out today, at least supposedly. So maybe if Natasha comes back on Discord, I will invite her again, send her to another call and we can review the second episode. But, as this episode stands right now, I am going to have to do this on my own. But, you know what? It's alright. I think... I think I will survive. And I think also I have fixed the format, because remember, I fixed that for the A Night to Remember, so that the method has been tested, and I now have two laptops at my disposition, which I can use to the most perfect of advantages. So without further ado, let us proceed into the much anticipated episode eight of My Street season six. I really didn't want to hurt you, but it's not like you gave me a choice. I've waited far too long for this moment. Said every Afmal fan ever in anticipation for this episode. So right off the bat, we have it so that there's action that's already taken place. Now, some people might complain that, yes, we did not get to see the epic battle between Michael and Holler. And yes, I'd agree to a certain extent, but also it does demonstrate the passage of time. And I guess if we were to open right immediately where we left off, it wouldn't be slightly fair. I'm not sure what I'm trying to convey with that, but something about the setup feels right. Except for the fact that this has disproven the uh, the hypothesis, I'm not gonna say theory, the, the hypothesis that we were going to get fully animated episodes, at least so far in this series, possibly later on. But I'm sure there's going to be plenty of wonderful animations in the follow-up. Regardless of that, we've still got the massive high quality Blue Jay Studios that we have grown to know and love. And they've been working really hard on this, and so far in the next 56 seconds it has clearly shown. I just paused it soon so I didn't have to, <laughs> so that I wouldn't have so many clips to skip when I actually edit this video. You don't know? What you're starting? <laughs> that power you have. I've wanted it back for a long, long time. You see, I once had it too. A lavish amount of energy to use at my discretion. But if you had that power to begin with, and you managed to overpower Holler, who supposedly has this power that you want, 
surely you don't need that power because you're already more powerful than you were when you had that power. Am I related to Sir Humphrey Appleby? Possibly. But my foolish son decided he wanted it for himself, and he took it from me. I've searched for millennia to figure out where it came from, and why it resonated with me. <laughs> and you know what I eventually found? A diary about a man, his wife and son, and a comet and a cannon. How many times did you let her use this? <gasps> How many people did you let her bring here? How many of her friends and family did you let her trick? How many people? Did you let Irene kill here? <laughs> All I'm asking is to be able to do the same thing. So he's planning to kill masses of people. Not gonna lie, I never quite understood what Michael's plan actually was apart from exposing the Ultima to get revenge on Derek. Because, quite frankly, if it was all about the business of Forever Potions, he seems to be a lot more successful now running Starlight Wonderland than ever. If you think about it, Starlight Wonderland is a parody of Disneyland, because we know the parallel between uh, Jason's uh, proposal to Jess in Disneyland and Aaron's proposal to Aphmau in Starlight Wonderland. And also we know that the tickets are extremely pricey. If, supposedly, he is the owner of the equivalent Disneyland, that already gives him so much success that he doesn't really need to do anything else. And yet his plan apparently is to kill people, as many people as Irene supposedly killed. This is the first time that he's mentioned this. And I'm not sure if I quite get why, but again, we're, we're kind of building back into this. So I'm not supposed to know why yet. But please look out for that, for again, if, you, if his plan is just simply world domination, that's too basic. Even though it is the most, <laughs> the most ambitious thing you could ever possibly do. But again, if you own Disneyland and you're kind of the equivalent of... I guess Walt Disney in his early days, what more world domination do you really need? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This isn't a point, but look at that island. Look at the quality of that. The visuals are stunning in this series now. They were already impressive to begin with, but now I can see why they've taken this long. Again, I'm sure you can find a way to do that with shaders and texture packs, but I still don't even know how they do those, those detailed eyes and the actual modelling of the characters. Because you certainly don't do that in the regular Skindex Nova skin, do you? But then again, what the heck do I know? If I... <laughs> If I knew all the tricks of the series, maybe I wouldn't enjoy it as much. Because, I guess, you know, everything has to have some form of magic. I mean, I've just watched a season- um, and I just watched the aftermath of a Michael vs. Holler battle, so I guess magic has to come into it. Sorry if you can hear the fireworks outside. I did not realise that there were going to be fireworks tonight. Hmm. I'll have to look into that.
Yeah. Well, if anything, now more people are going to try and get off the island, because if it's in the middle of the epicenter of an earthquake, which we know it is, then clearly there's going to be yet another uprising. Even the GFs aren't going to say, oh, we can't let you out, because <laughs> otherwise, you know, you're going to die. I think the Ultima is a lesser priority than, you know, saving the potential lives. Come to think of it, if they thought the Ultima was dangerous to begin with, keeping people on the same island as the Ultima instead of investigating the pass their passengers who want to go back individually is a horrible plan. Because that just puts people in immediate risk without them being able to get out. Why did I never think of this before? Suddenly the whole Michael's plan and the GF's plan, suddenly I think about them in a whole new light that I had never thought of before. I don't know why this came to my mind just now, but it did. The patrol boat! What? Uh, here? It's outside! It's just dark! We have to hide! I hate giving Derek any credibility whatsoever, but he was right. It was risky to go back to where they were before, because that's what happened. Oh, why does Derek have to be right? I guess he couldn't be wrong all the time. It's too much. Sir, all the TVs in the house were replaced when we dropped off the sword. Good. Is the footage ready? The video is being edited down as we speak. Said Blue Jay Studios before making this video. <laughs> oh, they're making the joke so easy for me. Broadcast it to the entire house as soon as it's ready. Make sure he sees it. Sir, what about the tremors? Should we evacuate the compound? Not yet. That was just a test of the flight capabilities. Have my helicopter ready. It won't be long now. We'll be ready for liftoff at a moment's notice, sir. We'll finish all the preparations. Oh, look at the orange hair! Of all people, it had to be these two that were standing guard right in front of the door. Of all coincidences. You need to let me in. Isn't that what I've been doing? I'm working with you to get Caitlin and I off this island! I need more. What do you mean? <laughs> Stay here. You'll be rescued and off this island soon. So there's external contacts going on. Oh, I, I paused it just at the right moment for the Travis avatar to be suspended on the stairs, but also on the... <laughs> And the light spot as well. So it's like internal spirit Travis is floating across the stairs. Anyway, it seems like demon Travis has contacts elsewhere. Again, that's implying connection with Michael. We don't know that for certain yet, but that's what I think Buddha Studios want people to think at this point, whether it's true or not. Also of note, Travis's eyes seem to be a bit of a greyish purple. Maybe it's just the angle, but I'm pretty sure they're meant to be grey, like they were in the flashback at the end of Season 4. So perhaps we were led to believe the wrong thing, and Travis's eyes weren't naturally grey. And the whole Forever Potions thing was a red herring, unless the Forever Potion was indeed applied to him to protect him from the demon until he let him in and he has a completely different natural eye color maybe then the truth about travis i was onto something by saying his eyes were blue by mistake perhaps his natural eye color is a third there we go you never know in this although his eyes were green side stories which i guess isn't quite canon but is implied to be you know free of all of this uh, kerfuffle they're going through right now, so I don't really know. Nor do I know where I'm going with this. As usual, what else is new when I do these reviews?
so sorry about that. Travis, your eyes. What's wrong? They're white. Did something happen? Okay, they are not white. I just went over what colour they are. And the comments in the Truth About Travis video went through what colour they are. So, no, they are definitely not white. He would be Herobrine if his eyes were white. No one talks about Herobrine anymore. Such a shame. We just need to wait here. My dad is sending soldiers to clear our names and take us off the island. <laughs> Your names didn't need clearing. I mean, you needed to identify yourselves to go through, but again, the whole this is Travis thing seemed to work perfectly fine for you. Ah, <sighs> so many things. Also, aren't they the same color eyes as Michael's? I just realized that. Well then. Travis! You just need to lay down for a second. Let me help you. That was an awful idea on the demon Travis's part. Weaken the body vessel that you need to escape. That was an awful idea. But, I don't know, maybe it needed to be weakened in order to actually give full control, whatever that means at this point. Hey guys, Jess here, and I'm excited to announce that our wolf plush, our squishy, is finally back. If you guys are excited about it, please check the description down below for more information. Of course, I don't know it's back, because it's coming back because I have to... Okay, alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop with that. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the episode. Take care! Bye! Ah, uh, the merch plug. I know I raged about it in episode 3, but in this case, you know what, now that I'm actually on my own, maybe I could actually have the uh, wolf plush delivered to me. <laughs> that would make an interesting addition. If I've got the space on the shelf that I'm looking at right now as we speak where I could put that wolf plush. And it's so interesting to see, to see, you know, cute and lovable Jess in the middle of, an, of a very serious high stakes episode. It's like, how did this this come out of the mind of Jess, as seems as who's so endearing otherwise, but not of the series isn't endearing. What I mean is, you know, serious, high stakes, and full of tragedy. You wouldn't expect such a melancholic thing to come out of such a happy, seemingly carefree person. Which gives all the more credit to her, actually. I need to get that plush. I need to get that plush. It's the camp at the end of the cave. Ah, here we go. This is the part we were looking for. What exactly is Dottie's plan right now? Obviously, we know that Afro and Zane are being lied to. But there we go. This is what happens, and now we're about to see the plan unravel. And the meeting between Afmau and Ian again for the first time in a while. And the first time Ian meeting Afmau as a werewolf. Which is going to be a very interesting dynamic. Because now she's the werewolf and he's the human. Ooh, okay. Alright, let's not delay this anymore. Can we hurry up? Sorry it's taking so long. I'm just making sure we take a longer way to cover our tracks. How bad is he hurt? Can you tell me anything else? I wasn't able to tell. I left immediately to find help the moment he came back. Mm -hmm. Gotta tell Aaron. Gotta tell Aaron. Afmel? Hey, Dottie. What are you guys doing? Daniel! Hey, Afmel. I'm taking Afmel to see Aaron. She wants. She wants to Hang on a second. Daniel seems. He sounds different. I know he's under a lot of stress, but the voice he seems to have differed a lot. This is why you just. Having a close. A close relationship with your voice actors is a really, really good idea for this series, because obviously Ross works directly for Afmau. 
So, and again, I guess that, you know, that close relationship and probably his maybe input on the series has conveyed the character a, a lot more. Because his voice is sounding a lot less comical now, which was a problem initially for, you know, Daniel in the super serious Mario Street Season 6 and kind of Season 5 towards the end. So yeah, nice fix. And actually, going back to the point about having a close relationship with your voice actors, I had to come back to that, but at the end of this video, if I remember. L let me take her. R remember what, what Alpha said? <laughs> you should be outside looking for more werewolves. Don't worry. I'll take her to see Aaron. Okay. Don't worry, F. Now everything is going to be okay. No, oh, she's found a werewolf already. And this is really well played. This is really well played, especially for Daniel. Oh, Moon T would be so proud of him. <laughs> you need to go. What? No! I need to see Aaron. Aaron is not here. Ian took over the camp. He's waiting there for you. Everyone is under his control. He's been waiting for this. Aaron, you weren't lying. Dottie, Blaze, everyone. This is the second time that that Afmau has missed as uh, failed to trust Aaron. The first time being in season three, which there was the incredibly forced kind of breakup in quotes between them. And this time is a time when it actually matters. Once again, a nice fix. Because that part of Season 3 I didn't like, this part of Season 6 I am generally invested in. Captain of the Guardian Forces, I've heard so much about you. How and from whom? I mean, we haven't even heard that much about him. So where is he getting his information from? Also, can we point out that Ian's eyes seem to be that seem to be whiter than Travis's? Again, saying what Caitlin was saying before. I know I'm nitpicking, but at this point I have to nitpick. For the past minutes, I've not said a single word because I can't think of what to say. Because all of that, all of that drama, there's not really that much I can comment on. I mean, my goodness. See, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. This series has the power to make me speechless. And that does not happen very often. It really does not. So to all those people who keep on saying I'm doing these for all the views or whatever, <clears throat> Benedict, I genuinely love this series, and I will reiterate that point again. Just so we're clear. I'm gonna make sure that Benedict watches this episode. Or maybe not, I don't know. Yes, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do that. You don't say. <laughs> Glad I'm so popular around here. Don't sass me! You better get comfortable, because you're not leaving this place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell that to the tracking device on my equipment. The rest of my unit has been following my movement. They will descend on this cave with brutal force. Oh, that makes sense, actually. It was interesting. I thought he was working alone because he mistrusted what his um, unit was telling him. So I guess if now it turns out that Michael has interfered with that, then it's going to be even worse for him. Whichever way, somebody is in deep trouble. It's one of the two. <laughs> you don't know, do you? <laughs> uh, 
And I think I know which one it is. No one is coming. And your unit isn't even yours anymore. They belong to someone far more capable. Someone that will use them better than you ever did. What are you talking about? The man that made all of this happen. The man that called you here. The one man in this world that is worthy of respect. Michael. One by one, your men were all forced to meet him. And he's really good at convincing people to do what they're told. Ooh, that means Kim and Lucinda are in trouble. Okay, I see where this is going. In fact, I bet that's how the episode ends, but who knows. And now, you're all that's left, but not for long. You'll make such a wonderful bodyguard, and you'll allow me to do s Once again, knee action. Character modeling, brilliant. So much more with your access. And this is all that it'll take to convince you. Alpha! Alpha! What is it? It's the Guardian forces. They're here. They're at the entrance. They have us surrounded. Oh my goodness, Daniel is so good at playing. At playing people. He's managed to deceive Dottie and now he's talking to Ian like this. My, my word. I mean, there's a possibility that Ian won't actually you know, fall for it. But still, he's showing that he's actually really quite clever. You know, instead of the instead of the uh, dumb and naive comic relief that he was supposed to be. This is a side to Daniel that I really like seeing. Hold him down! So, even though he's a human, he still has his strength? How does that work? I need to search more into the, uh, the whole werewolf biology, because I guess once that bone structure has readjusted itself, it's always optimized. And it was just the ears and tail that maybe got suppressed, one of the two. There's a theory in the making about this. I'll do something on that in the future. Daniel did a wonderful job and brought us just the person we've been looking for. There's no one else here, you Omega turd. You are so bad at lying. No, he isn't. He's been doing great this entire episode. Don't even lie. I know you're there, my pet. It's been so long since I've been able to play with you. If you don't show yourself, your little friend here is going to learn how to obey very quickly. But then you won't have a potion for Toby. Make your mind up. <sighs> no! Ian! It's been too long. Said every My Street fan ever. <laughs> Again. Thanks for making these jokes so easy. <laughs> Aren't you happy to see me? No, never. I never wanted to see your face again. He wasn't being serious. He's being coy. I didn't actually need a response. We all know that you hate him. He knows you hate him. Right back where you belong. I've waited so long for this. I have too. 
What? Your eyes! <laughs> Are you that surprised? Okay, I know that was supposed to be a big deal, but come on, it was very obviously a fake out. Why is this? Because in season 4, she already got immunity to the Forever Potion. The human body is something that is grossly underestimated by Ian. Especially the human immune system. <laughs> well played, Afmal. Well played. But also, I didn't think you were going to stab him, my goodness. <laughs> Alpha! Run! Afmal? I hope I got your heart. And you're to blame, for you give love a bad name. You'll have to try harder than that! There's too many of them! Why didn't it work? What did you do? No. No. No, no not yet. We need to wait for the right audience. What a shame. I wanted to have so much fun with you. <gasps> we interrupt this program to bring you the following important announcement. Today, a third member of the Lycan family has been captured and executed. Rachel Lycan was attained this evening, and upon resisting arrest, she proceeded to go on a rampage. The Guardian forces had no choice but to take her down. <coughs> Aaron Lycan is the last of the Lycan family alive and is still at large. If you have any information, do not hesitate. Jeez. I want to say that's another fake out because we just got one with the exact same score as the Aaron fake outs in season four. But, I mean, we've already had Melissa die. Unless that's a lie and they're just telling that information to get Aaron to be enraged. Good. Is the footage ready? The video is being edited down as we speak. No. I've got it. Okay. There was, on social media, an anagram. Another anagram, because, you know, whatever. That I think, maybe it was either Aphmau or Jason posted. Not sure. But, basically, the anagram, I can't remember what it said originally, but it's spelt out, is it going to happen again, or something similar to that. It was a very easy anagram to solve. We didn't know what it was referring to, but maybe it was referring to a Lycan family member being killed. <sighs> Let's see if I put it to the ending of the episode or not. Mommy? Yes, sweetheart? Are people afraid of me? Aaron, why do you ask that? Where did you get this? Better question is why on earth you have that in your house in the first place? Ah, oh, dearie me. It's enough to even... To even have, you know, the information that you're an Ultima to begin with, which you would have to know from childhood anyway, in case your eyes had no control. But... Wow. Just wow. Of all things... I gave Derek Lycan credit in this episode. I guess that he's been killed as well if it, Aaron's the last Lycan family member. But my goodness! That! 
Also, I think this is Joseph. We've already had Julia being uh, in the trailer, so I guess this makes sense to actually now have Joseph. It's only fair. And again, to his credit, he does really, really well. See, that's what happens when you when you are your parents are so talented. Inevitably, some of that rubs down on you. Although my parents are both IT professionals and I'm terrible at it, so I don't know how far that goes in certain people. Oh uh, well. School, sweetheart. People just don't understand. They're not afraid of you. They're afraid of what they don't know. And they don't know you, therefore they're afraid of you. You're really bad at this, I'm sorry. I'm not scary. <laughs> A cute little guy like you, scary. <laughs> now go to bed, sweetheart. Mommy has work to do. Mommy? Yes? Can you sleep with me tonight? I can't, sweetheart. Mommy has work to do, okay? Mm. Tomorrow. I promise. Promise? Promise. Mommy will always be here for you. Oh, I'll always be there for you. Oh, everything ties together so well. Oh, this series is so clever. Benedict, how can you criticize me for liking this? I'm sorry, but come on. Just, just come on. Okay, and that's how the episode ends. So, I was wrong? in how I thought it was going to end. I thought it was going to end in Lucinda and Kim in the presence of Michael, and there was going to be, you know, the music of always the... I can't remember what it was called, but... the I wanna hold ya... that track. That was going to play, we were going to get kind of a rotating shot, and that was it. We were supposed to think, oh, are they going to get controlled? Are they going to be controlled in the next episode? I thought that was what was going to happen. Apparently not. I have one more of these to review anyway, so I guess I'll find out, whatever. But what I was going to say about close relationships with voice actors uh, is that I have actually been hired as a voice actor by a channel called Lady Mania for her series Mystic Hills. And uh, I've, well, I've sent the script to the first part and uh, my character only actually has one line so far. Um, but I just thought it was worth mentioning if you wanted to check out that series, because Season 1 doesn't have any voice actors in it, but Season 2 is where people such as myself will come in. And I probably have the most minor of characters, because again, I only have one line, and uh, given what I've seen of the other se the series, that he's just kind of, you know, another person in the series, mostly background. But either way, I'm still happy to be a part of it, and who knows, maybe I'll do something else in the future, because those characters are going to appear in other series. But that's that's it for now, and I, I hope to actually, you know, be able to develop that close proximity that's particularly Afmao and Ross have, you know, Afmao and, I mean, Jess and, Jess and Ross, Jess and Andy, all those people. And thinking about Daniel's change, Again, your pal Ross, I said in the My Street Multiverse episode, that your pal Ross, the person and the character, is what holds the My Street series together and the whole My Street Multiverse together. So having him take the spotlight once again is a brilliant addition, and I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with him and with Toby and with Aphmau in the next episode. But I've rambled on for long enough, so I'm going to leave that there and see if Natasha is on Discord now. So on that note, until next time, farewell.